day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Or they'll walk away from anybody who's trying to speak the full gospel. <laughs> because they say, look, I can't receive this. This is too much. Uh, it's just too much. I can't handle it. And, and, and God said, no, you have to. You have to be able to love and forgive people. You know, you, you can't sit there. And if you're getting wrapped up and said, there's some people that sit there and pull away from you. If you say, to say well, uh, you, you, you're talking about loving somebody that's, 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 that's gay. You're like, what? You mean you you be you can't be respectful to a person despite their orientation? You, you mean you can't do that? You mean that that's a big thing? Did you supposed to you've been taught to 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 hate a person? Did you sit there and say, no, you can't deal with that? You can't oh, I ain't accept that. That that is not how you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go ahead and 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 and, and preach a standard and reject anybody to act that way. But you don't understand. The Bible said, you sin at one point, you sin at all points. When a woman was called in an act of adultery, and all those people wanted to stone her because she violated the law. But Christ had then said, he without sin, let him cast the first stone. Same thing here. Look at this, I want to read this. This is 1 John. I want to share this with you. 1 John chapter 1. Let, let's read that and check this out. This is called the word of life. Verse one, that which was from the beginning, which you have heard, let me make sure I put this over here, enough so we can read all the thing. Which you have heard, which you have seen with our eyes, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and on our hands have handled the word of life. <laughs> For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was the Father, and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that you may be full. And there's a little sub paragraph walk in the light. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship, listen to this, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one to another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, what? He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and the word of God is not in us. We have to understand is that we, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us have had issues and shortfalls that, that we really don't want to, uh, that we really have to work on and, and deal with, right? And if, therefore, we should not be a stranger when we talk about loving one another. It should not be a, a, a issue to be able to love somebody, whether they're black or white, whether they, they're from one country or another country, whether they're straight or, or, straight or gay or whatever. If those things are hindering you, you really, really have to sit there and say, wow, is it worth me going? Is it worth me losing my salvation over the disagreement 
of the orientation of people. Nobody's telling you to, to uh, what I'll say, if nobody's telling you to put these people or any person that is walking in sin, I'm talking about even an adulterer or fornicator or something like that, it's, it's not telling you to say they're supposed to be the ones on the pulpit uh, or in the choir <laughs> or any leadership position. And no, we're not telling you that. We're telling you is let, let give people the word. At least don't don't be don't don't be hateful, you know. So I, I had this here I wanted to share with you uh, before we wrap up this for this segment here. Uh, I like this one. I, I may want to read the whole thing, <laughs> but I, I want to start with this piece right here. I think it's powerful in itself. Uh, this is this is uh, First John as well. And uh, it's talking about uh, love one another, you know, and that, that's what we're talking about uh, in, in my segments here about the importance of loving one another. Uh, and and I, I know it runs to, to a degree, I think it runs a lot of people off because they really have a problem with loving one another. <sighs> love, we, we, we can talk about Jesus, hallelujah. But when Jesus said to love one another, Oh, wait a minute now. I can't love everybody. That, that, that's just too much for me. But that's what he calls us to do. Look at this. This is in 1 John chapter 3, starting in verse 11. And you can see the title said, Love One Another. It says right here, For this is the message that, that ye heard from the beginning, and that we should have love, that we should love one another. Look at this now. For this is a message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil, and his brother righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if you, if the world hates you, come on now, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whosoever has this world's goods and sees his brother have need and shut up his bowels of passion from him, how dwells the love of God in him? My little children, let us not he said, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. <laughs> and hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. But if we, if, but if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Be loved. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive from him because we keep what? His commandment, which is what? To love one another. And do those things that are pleasing in what? His sight. And this is his commandment. That we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keeps his commandment dwells in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abides in us by the spirit which he has given us. I, you know what I'm saying is I'm not, I'm not speaking some type of suggestion. I'm not speaking some type of uh, uh, new concept here. I'm speaking about the fact that God loved us. And he wants us to love one another. And, and if that's hard, then 
God said, keep preaching it. Keep preaching it. Because that's what he wants us to do. Preach the gospel. Be, be, preach it in season and out of season. It's, it's, it's never going to fail. Amen? All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and leave you with that one. And we'll move on to the next session. I got one of the brothers showing up anyway. God bless. Bye-bye.